can't believe it that you said that to yourself a few times. Today we're going to talk about avoiding headaches in real estate transactions. So it's going to get stressful. What's the best practice, best thing you can do to, to avoid headaches and difficulties? Your agent should ask for a consult or strategy session with you as you're preparing to buy or sell your house. The best way to avoid the headaches and stress of the transaction is to do this strategy session with them. So basically, and towards the end, I'm going to talk about a really scary part and decide whether or not you should do that. Um, but basically this strategy session or console just helps you to get on the same page with, with the agent. Uh, so I'm going to talk about run through kind of what I cover during these sessions and it's certainly not everything, uh, but at least it's a, a start, you'll get an idea of it. Um, so we'll cover specifically uh, working with buyer and seller. We'll talk through the process, uh, just reiterate, you know, get pre-approved, then agent, start looking at home, under contract, inspections, blah, blah, blah. Uh, go through the process. And then I, I want to discuss your goals, like, you know, not just what type of house you want. We'll get to that, but I want to know your goals. Are you going to be in this house for two years? You think you're going to be in this house for 20 years? Um, that's going to help me advise you on whether or not this is a good decision. And then we'll talk about features of the home, the most exciting part, the part you care about the most, right? What do you want in the home? Does it need to be a three bedroom, three car garage? Does it need to be 1,500 square feet? Does it need to be 5,000 square feet? You want uh, just a subdivision that's, you know, a third of an acre, hopefully, or, you know, are you looking for five acres? Uh, so we'll talk about those things. And then I'm going to uh, do a little exercise if there's multiple buyers involved. Um, We'll kind of do some discovery of if you guys are on the same page with what's most important to you. Uh, that's that's a big deal. Uh, a lot of times couples don't realize that they're not on the same page with what's most important. So you guys need to figure that out. Um, and there can be, you know, maybe one thing that you don't agree on. But if if there's only one item out of five that you think is most important and you've got a big difference, it's going to be hard to agree on, on a place. So you guys need to talk through that. Um, we also talk strategy, you know, um, based on your situation, what can we do to be uh, most effective and to make, make the best offer? We'll talk about financing. Are you pre-approved? Who are you pre-approved with? I'll give you my recommendations on if that's a good lender and why that matters. Um, we'll talk about the market. What's the market look like currently? And particularly, you know, if, if you're a buyer or even a seller, you need to know what a good offer looks like in the current market. You know, four years ago, a good offer was you're paying asking price and not asking the seller to contribute to seller concessions at all um, or closing cost. In this market, that's like the starting point for a good offer. So, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. What do you need from an agent? You know, what communication preferences are you looking like? Have you done this before? Uh, what kind of guidance do you need? What, what are you looking for? Uh, and then the scary part, maybe it really shouldn't be that scary. Uh, but the agent you're working with may ask you to sign a buyer's or seller's agency agreement, uh, at that time. Uh, different people do view this differently. If you've worked with this agent before, you, you should know, you know, whether or not you're comfortable with this person. Um, if you haven't worked with them before, you have to make that decision. My encouragement would be if you're comfortable with this person, you know, and you agree with things you've talked about, there's really no reason not to sign with them. Um, especially if you don't plan, if you plan on using them, you need to sign with them because really they can't represent you without that signed document. There have been times and I've, well, there's been times where uh, people will wait to sign that document until you make an offer. 
that's really not best practice. Um, like I said, they really can't advise you. They're really not your agent at all uh, until that document's signed. So, so things are square and complete. You need that agent agency agreement in place uh, before you begin the process. So hope that covers some things. If you have questions, let me know. Hope your summer is off to a good start and that you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you.